Hello, Jerry the geologist here again. I woke up this morning and started digging this hole in the ground. Each time I push my shovel into the earth, I bring up a load of soil, and I've noticed that each load of soil has a few rocks in it. I am digging this hole today to teach you about the outer layer of the earth. The earth has layers. Sort of like a sheet and a blanket are different layers of covers on a bed. What other things have layers? Beneath your backyard, the sidewalk, the school, actually beneath most every place people live, there is soil, which is sometimes called dirt. Different types of soil appear in the earth in layers. Each layer of soil is made of different things. Which can give it a different color or a different texture. Texture means what something feels like when you touch it. The thickness of the soil varies or is different, depending on where you live. In some places on the Earth, the soil is several feet thick. In other places on the Earth, it is just a few inches, and in some places on the Earth, there is no soil at all. Here, where I live, the soil is rich and dark near the surface. However, as I dig deeper into the earth, I can see a definite change in color. Here, the word "change" means to become or make something different. The color in this soil has changed from dark brown to bright red. That color change means I have reached a new layer of reddish clay. It's getting a little harder to dig now, so I'll have to use my pickaxe. Clank! My pick just hit something really hard below the red clay. The farther down I go, the harder the clay becomes. Pretty soon, I will hit bedrock, a solid layer. Of hard rock that I won't be able to dig through with my shovel. I dug this hole to show you that there are different layers of soil and rock beneath your feet. The farther you go into the earth, the more things change. The dark soil on top is fairly easy to dig into with a shovel, but the deeper layer of clay is harder to dig. Because it has been compacted or squished by the weight or pressure of everything above it. Remember, pressure is one of the three words Jerry said we should keep in mind. Pressure or pushing from top layers is one reason deeper layers of soil are harder to dig. This diagram shows you what the inside of the Earth would look like. If you could cut out a big chunk of it, the crust is the outermost layer of the Earth, represented here by a thin brown line across the outer edge of the Earth. I have been digging into the very outermost portion of the crust today. Most of the Earth is rock, and most of that rock is beneath the crust in the other three layers. The mantle, which is red, the outer core, which is orange, and the inner core, which is yellow. The distance from the surface where you and I live, all the way to the middle of the inner core, is nearly four thousand miles. The distance from the surface to the middle of the inner core. Is one thousand miles farther than the width of the entire United States. This is one thick planet. I will teach you more about the mantle, outer core, and inner core next time. For now, let's focus on the thinnest layer, the crust. The Earth's crust is between two,、uh, three, and twenty miles. Depending on where you are on Earth, three miles would be about the distance from here to your home. Twenty miles would be about the distance from here to another city. 
Most people, plants, and animals live on the surface or the outermost edge of the crust. Remember, the Earth's surface is covered by oceans and continents. Everything alive on Earth lives in, on, or above these oceans and continents on the crust. For example, you and your dog live on the crust. Worms and moles, on the other hand, live underground or in the crust. Birds fly in the air above the crust. And fish swim in the water that is flowing on the crust. The crust is where geologists like me look to learn about the history of the Earth. In the crust, we find different layers of rock which teach us about different periods of time in the Earth's history. Remember that the Earth is over 4 billion 500 million years old. Each layer of rock was formed during a different period of time in the Earth's history, so we can study each layer to learn about each period of time. Geologists study the crust for clues about the history of the Earth. I already introduced you to this place called the Grand Canyon. Here, the geology of the Earth's crust sits like an open book waiting to be read. An open book is a saying that means something is easy to learn about and understand. Layer upon layer of different rock tells the geologist. When this place was covered with a cool ocean and when it was not. The Grand Canyon makes it easy for geologists to learn about the Earth's crust because all of the layers are visible and easy to see. Geological or Earth changes can do all sorts of tricky things to the rocks on the Earth's crust. These formations in Arches National Park. In the state of Utah, show what thousands of years of wind, rain, and ice can do to this type of stone. Some rocks are mysterious. This is called Uluru or Ayers Rock. It is the only tall thing in an otherwise flat, barren grassland in the middle of Australia. Geologists have figured out that this is a remnant left over from a time when the entire surface there was covered in this type of rock. A remnant is something left over or remaining. Eventually, all the other rock eroded due to wind and rain, and only this one mound of rock remained. Wind and rain wore away all the other rock. Different places tell different stories. Not all interesting rocks are above ground. This photo was taken down in a cave, which is a large hole or space underground. A cave is basically an area in the Earth's crust that has been hollowed out for one reason or another, usually as a result of underground water flowing in and dissolving the rock over millions of years. Caves are really amazing places to explore. People usually do not think too much about what is happening underground, deep below our feet, but the fact is that what happens deep underground has everything to do with what we see in the world around us. Next time, we will take a closer look at what's happening in those other layers. I'd better go ahead and fill in this hole now. See you next time.